Hi, everybody. My name is Julia Lee. I'm a shoulder elbow surgeon in Fresno, California. Um, I'm here to talk to you guys about the value of humeral planning in the VIP system. Uh, so we'll go from there. For me, why is humeral planning valuable? There are certainly cases where the pathology is more on the humeral side rather than the glenoid side. So understanding what the humerus looks like and how you can plan your implant based on that is very important. It allows me to have better understanding of the proximal humeral anatomy and helps me understand where to resect a little bit better. And it's also very important for me to be able to see where my osteophytes are so I know how much I have to remove, where they are, and, and kind of plan for that in my overall approach. For me also, it helps me figure out what size I want for the implant, whether it is an anatomic and I'm trying to recreate the set of rotation, or if it's reversed and how big of a cup I can go with um, based on the patient's humeral anatomy. So if you look over here, this is a patient of mine. And if you want to take a look at his x-rays, he has an AP and an axillary view uh, on here. If you look at the AP view, it seems pretty benign. He's got a bad arthritis with some medialization of the glenoid, but it really doesn't show the whole picture. If you look at the axillary view, you can see that he's got very large osteophytes around the entirety of the humeral head. And most importantly, if you don't have humeral planning, you will miss the osteophyte that's going behind the glenoid as well. Having humeral planning here really helps me with my surgical approach helps me make sure I have a couple extra steps to make sure I need to have a DARA retractor in the joint before I can dislocate it. And sometimes even in these cases, you need an osteotome to be removed the osteophyte prior to dislocating the joint. So having something like humeral planning can help me visualize that and help me have a better plan to my surgery the day of. Going forth from here, in terms of an anatomic application, I do think that having humeral planning here allows you to better select the size of your humeral head, which helps you better understand um, how long your cage screw has to be, so you better understand the anatomy. And it's great because it helps you really recreate that center of rotation very well. You can see that on your plan, and then you can also see that hopefully executed in your post-operative x-rays as well. Even in terms of reverse applications, it helps you understand which size you should be using for your stem, whether it's a short short stem or a long stem, having a good idea of what size you should be using is very helpful for surgical planning. It can also tell you how deep you want to inset that stem so you can have an inlay or a flush lay position of your component. And also for me, if you're using combination liners or if it's a smaller patient or a bigger patient, uh, to be able to figure out how big of a cup you want to use to better inset that component. So very important to have just a better surgical plan, have better outcomes, and have an easier time at surgery with humeral planning. So we'll go over some tips and tricks as well on how to use humeral planning in the VIP system. And so for me, I always want to take a look at the humeral head first. For me, I personally rotate the head to the correct side of uh, anatomy. So if it's a right side, I make sure I rotate it to where it looks like on the right side. For left side, I rotate it to what it looks like on the left side. And I always choose my the resection of my humeral head cut first, and that's usually how I start. I can see the different osteophytes that are present. I can see what size I need for my trunnion if I'm doing anatomic. I can see what's I need for my cup if I'm doing a reverse. And from there, I can rotate the model around so I can actually see what the cut looks like in 3D. You can see the anterior aspect, you can see the posterior aspect. And you also have a really nice screen on the left side that helps you see what it looks like on a 2D CT scan as well. So that's very helpful in terms of sizing. And from there, there are different things that you can do to rotate to make sure you're not overhanging your implant. You can also see, make sure you're not perforating the cortex. So different things that you can check using the humeral head head planning section. So let's go from here. Let's take a look at a couple examples that I have for you. So this is usually the screen that shows up when you first log into your VIP account. As you can see, this particular patient, we are planning an anatomic component, and this is the glenoid part of it. They have their inclination as well as their version on that left side over here, and their glenoid side has already been planned. So let's move over to the humerus. I usually start with the right side first. This is a 3D rendering of their, of their humerus. And for me, this is a right side, so I need to switch it over to the correct anatomy. And from here, after switching it to the correct side, what I do is I put that humeral head completely back on because I want to see what I should be seeing at the time of surgery. From here, I can determine on your left side over here the resection level. So you can see what it looks like, how much humeral head that you are taking. So for me, that looks about right, right there. That's the humeral head cut that I'm planning on taking. So let's take that humeral head off. And there we go. Uh, you can see that humeral head cut right there. Then I come over to the left side 
And what you see here, there's a green circle, and that green circle is a center of rotation. The yellow uh, crosshairs that are in the middle is a really the, truly the center of rotation of the patient's native anatomy. With my humeral head cut, what Arthrex has done in the VIP system is you're looking at the purple crosshairs. So you want to get that purple crosshair to match the yellow crosshair as much as you can to make sure that you're matching the patient's native anatomy as much as you can. As we all know, anything about 2.7 millimeters more makes it where you're not restoring their anatomy appropriately. So so from here, I want to make sure those purple crosshairs better match that yellow side. What we want to do is perhaps changing the component position to better match that. So I think that looks really good. And this is sized for a 41 millimeter trunnion, and I like that size. That looks pretty good. With the 41 millimeter trunnion, you have two different head options. And over here, you can look at the two different head options. You can see a 41 by 16 and a 41 by 18. And both of those, you can see, restore that center of rotation rather well. For me personally, I undersize these if I can, just because I do not want to put extra tension on the patient's rotator cuff. Other things that you want to look at, if you want to check your radial mismatch uh, between a small, medium, large, and extra large glenoid component and your humeral head size, uh, they have a nice little chart here that can show you what works based on your implant selection. And coming back to this particular image, other things that you can look at, you're looking at the cage screw. So the cage screw function is over here. You can see where the cage screw is. This is a small that's in there now. We can take a look at the medium going up a size. That looks okay, but you certainly do not want a large. If you're perforating cortex at all, you're going to have a nice little warning message there. So we want to size down. And for me, I think a small component looks pretty good there. Looking over here in the middle, what you can do, you can do an anterior posterior translation over here. It will tell you if you're overhanging the humeral head too much, either anteriorly or posteriorly, so you can move that uh, to get a better idea of where you want your ideal component to sit. So I think this sits very well looking over here. This on the right side, I think it sits very well as well. I like that recreation. This is what you're going to see on the x-ray. I like the way that that would look. Center of rotation is stored very nicely on that left side over here. Just remember, I need to take off the osteophytes at the time of surgery. So I think this looks very nicely positioned for a humeral head component. So after you have planned your humeral head in the humeral planning section, you can actually take a look at the joint overall. So this is a nice screen to take a look at the component and how it sits. So on the left side over here, we are looking at the patient's native anatomy. This is their original 2D CT scan. And on the right side over here, you can see the anatomic that you have planned for the patient. So a couple of things to point out. Overall, looks pretty good in terms of restoring the patient's anatomy. There's an osteophyte down through here that we will definitely take off at the time of surgery. So that's something to consider over here. You see these crosshairs also. It says that the delta is 9.7. So this is a reconstruction of the center of rotation in 3D anatomy. We don't know exactly how this affects function overall at this point in time, but this is something that we are looking into with the research development team, hopefully understanding better how this 3D center of rotation affects patient outcomes. Other things you want to consider in this particular view is looking at the patient. The patient's arm it may be positioned slightly different than what they would be able to actually achieve in real life based on their ha body habitus, so something else to consider but definitely an overall good view of what an anatomic replacement would look like in your patient after surgery. So these are a couple examples of how Arthrex VIP humoral planning has helped me with my patients and my cases. Check it out for yourself at arthrex.com. Thank you very much.